Alright, so what is up everybody, it's my base 12 we're back at you guys with a brand new video, and the Eagles actually did it, we shocked the NFL world, we beat the Patriots 35-28, to nobody thought we could do it, I didn't think we could do it, I said we were going to get slaughtered, um, man, what a win for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I kind of moved the camera there just a bit, alright, <coughs> Anyway, let's get into the game. That defense that gave up 90 points in two weeks to nobody quarter well, Matt Stafford isn't a nobody quarterback, but to, to average quarterbacks goes into Foxborough against a future Hall of Famer in Tom Brady and goes in there and really and forces him to two interceptions. One of them will pick six. I honestly don't even know where to start with this game. Let's start with the defense. Um Finally, we got that pass rush that we've been missing so long for these past three or four weeks. We have not been able to get to the quarterback. This week, we were able to consistently get pressure on Brady, which forced him to get the ball out even quicker than he usually has to. So he already has a quick release, but because of the pressure we got, he had to you know, get it out a little quicker than, than usual. Um, also, the back end. Eric Rowe, is a, he has improved so much. From when we saw him in the preseason to now, he is a huge improvement. He would put a lot of starting corners right now out of their jobs on other teams. Um, right now, he's looking like a huge upgrade over Nolan Carroll, who in the beginning of the year looked fine, but now, the, lately, he's looked terrible. Erico was hanging with receivers. He wasn't getting beat deep. He wasn't getting pass interference calls. And... Crucial on that last fourth down play on for Brady when he threw the ball and Brad, uh, Rowe poked his hands in there and forced an incompletion. So huge improvement from Eric Rowe. Byron Maxwell, he actually got a pick and he was actually playing okay. He did give up a couple passes, but you can't expect anyone to be perfect. Um, well, Maxwell played okay. Malcolm Jenkins dropping into the nickel. He played amazing. Got a pick six on Tom Brady. Not many people can say they got a pick six on Tom Brady at home in Foxborough in week, like, what, 13 or something? So, huge, huge play by the defense. And it just seemed like everyone that was rotating in would just step up. EJ Biggers stepped up, made some plays. Bo Allen stepped up, made some plays. Brandon Hart stepped up and made some plays. Um, everybody stepped up and made some plays in the defense, which is great. Special teams, Darren Sproles showed up to play. Got a good, good punt return, and that was all because of Chris Marigos. He went, he went and he was, he, he could, if he blocked, um, if he blocked the defender that was coming towards Sproles, it would be an illegal block in the back, and they pointed it out on TV. But since he didn't, he just went and sort of, you know, sort of nudged him. That wasn't a penalty, and Sproles got the lane he needed, and he got that touchdown. So, special teams playing really well, got a block punt. Najee good, went around and picked it up, and guess who blocked it? Chris Marigos. The guy is a beast. I'm so glad we got him from Seattle. Um, great, great special teams guy. Always plays with heart. Chris Marigos, you're the man. Now onto the offense. Now, offense did not play as well, but... If you have a good defense and a good special teams, your offense does not need to be perfect. You just need to make the right plays at the right times, which is exactly what the Eagles did. They got the running game going because, finally, Chip Kelly and Deuce Staley listened to the public and to the media, and they didn't play Murray as much. And the times they did play Murray, minus that like 20-yard run near the end of the game, which was a crucial run. Not going to fault him for that. Not going to snub him for that because that was a crucial run. But minus that, he was really a non-factor. Even in those plays where we would get under center and we'd hand him the ball, he wasn't really a factor. But Kenyon Barner and Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles had 16 carries. I don't think he's ever had that many carries in his career, or at least not now, like not recently. 
Um, but great game by Darren Sproles. Always fighting hard, always fighting for extra yards. Kenyon Barner, great game, but almost cost us the game with that fumble. But thankfully, the defense came up big. But Kenyon Barner, great game. Uh, DeMarco Murray, pretty average, pretty, uh, pretty mediocre game. Um, Sam Bradford. I now see why so many people were excited to have him back. And I didn't really see it until now how much of an upgrade he is from Mark Sanchez. And because Mark Sanchez, what it seems like to me, is as soon as he feels pressure, he, he moves. He moves, you know, he moves out of the pocket and he throws on the run and stuff off his back foot and everything. Bradford really hangs in there. and But he doesn't hang in there too long to the point where he gets sacked like Nick Foles. He has a good balance. He knows when to move and he knows when to stand in the pocket, which is great veteran quarterback presence. Now, I'm not saying he's a franchise quarterback. He still has a lot more to prove over these next, I think, four games left in this, uh, the season. However, he is starting to prove that, okay, he, he has a veteran presence that Mark Sanchez doesn't have and Nick Foles certainly didn't have. Um, so that's good to see. Uh, crucial, crucial third down where big balls chip. He, on third down, he could have easily just ran the ball and maybe gambled a little bit, but no, he went for the pass play. Jason Peters came up with the block. Bradford hung in there, stepped up, and launched it to Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper who pulled it in. Clutch. So, all in all, great defense, great special teams. Not average, but not great. You know, a little bit above average offense which is just fine if your defense special teams can get you there. So all in all, great win against the New England Patriots. Um, I'm still on that. I still don't like Chip Kelly, okay? I'm not going to go back on my word and start flip-flopping here, okay? Um, but if we can beat New England, we can beat anybody. And I feel like maybe we just got inside our own heads these last three weeks and really overestimated how good we are. So... You know, the defensive guys, I feel like they went and they, they said, Oh, I mean, we're just playing Miami. Oh, no, it's just Detroit. Oh, it's just Tampa Bay. You know? So, these next games against Buffalo, which is a great team, and you know they're going to be out to get Shady. And that's at home, too. So, I feel like the Eagles are going to come to play. And then against Arizona, another great team, who I feel like we can beat. And then we got Washington and New York. And New York choked, which I loved. Um... Anyway, I'm rambling. This video is getting a little long. Tell me what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you think the Eagles are going to win the NFC East? What are you, uh, your predictions for the rest of the year? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this on your social media and stuff. Follow me on Facebook and everything if you want to see some old copyrighted highlight videos and everything. And this is my 12. I'm out. Peace.